Doug, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are here live. Finally, sorry for the, we're a little bit delayed, but it's all good. So we're here. Um, I'm Anna Lee Huber, and this is Ashley Weaver, Rachel McMillan, and Susan Elia McNeil. Um, did I do that right? I always worry I get it wrong. <laughs> And we are so happy to be here chatting. Uh, we just love catching up. And you are all are welcome to post your comments and ask us whatever you want to know about. We will chat to your heart's content. Um, otherwise, we're just going to just chat away. So, <laughs> so you direct us or we're going to direct ourselves. <laughs> and who knows where we'll go, right? <laughs> so how are you guys, ladies? How are you, ladies? Good, good. Good. Uh, I Everybody's love, see, Susan, I love all the rent posts you have. Oh, yes. I'm being in rent. I am just like, that's the dream just to like go to rent seven times. Right. I, <laughs> I turned into a rent head in my. I love it. <laughs> it's so funny because like I, I'm the right age. Like I kind of lived rent. Like I lived yeah. in New York City and I was working in publishing and super poor. And, but I had to pay my rent. So like I never really got it. I, I have to say, after however many years it's been it, it really there's a, so much resonance and I appreciate it so much more now it was like my rebellious musical when I was in high school because I was a pastor's kid in a small town and I was like <laughs> listening to rent going to go see rent and I have to tell you the references were way over my head and one glaring one is Lenny Bruce I had no oh. idea who he was except as a rent lyric thanks to the marvelous Mrs. Maisel I'm like, oh, that's you. You're a comic. So Rachel, yeah. we're, we're similar age. I think like it was the show choir tune. The rent was oh like, yeah yeah show choir tune like yeah. It's like I went to rent. It was the and honestly, it was the pro. I mean, nowadays we're so acclimated to things, but from the town I was from, seeing rent in the city, I was like, this is so out of my universe. <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is so scandalous because the stage show at that time still had that massive kind of orgy scene that our high school drama teacher had to explain in the parental slip. Like, this is Lava M, but they are going to see this, but it's mature. They're all mature and we were all mature. So yay. But I'm, I'm so happy that you've been able to see it. And has your son been having a good time? He's having the best time, I such a great that. time. And, you know, last year their school, he goes to a performing arts school and their show was canceled, of course, because of COVID. Um, and he had a lead role and of course didn't do it. So to be actually oh. able to do it this year is, you know, so it's so heartbreaking for amazing. kids. Yeah. All the stuff they so miss hard. because you only mm. get that window. I mean, high oh, school yeah. is too short. You're forced to grow up and then you, uh, I've just, that's heartbreaking. I'm so glad that they're doing rent though, and that they're having a good time. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Is he, is he a senior this year or is he? He's a junior. Junior. Good. He's a junior. He's playing Benny. So that's he's a great the, role. The villain, but also I think <laughs> he's kind of the hero. Maybe as well. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. We've been seeing your posts. So we were like, we got to ask, we got to ask about that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, I've been seeing. Uh, I knew what you were talking about, Rachel. But at first, when you said I've been seeing all your rent posts, I thought you said oh. you've been seeing all her wrench yes. posts. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, she's been posting about wrenches. <laughs> well, could you know, the murder weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Susan's taken, you know, a bit of a detour in her yes, career. <laughs> very into mechanics now. Talking <laughs> about wrenches, you know, if I'm speaking in a derogatory way about some, not that I would ever do. That. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love or her rent post without the context of the musical like Susan's posting about her rent on <laughs> yeah. Twitter hi we all have to have an author brand but okay <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny no <laughs> so Rachel how the how's the book launch going it's Oh, your uh, Mozart code came out I'm last so week. I, got to do yeah. I know it's so great. Um, well, I, I had amazing news. I hope you don't mind sharing. I shared it with yeah. Anna. It was just the best news ever. Um, that, you know, it came out last Tuesday and they already had to print more. 
<laughs> so yeah, I was so excited about that. Um, and then today it was so amazing. I'm uh, in the Toronto star, which is our huge yeah. national paper here. And that was just like, it's like this little pandemic book is getting out in the world. Um, so I've been very, very excited, but you guys know how it is with releases. There's always something more to do. Like your publicist is like, can you turn around this article for this? Uh, and you know, there's all these zooms. This one is so fun and casual, but you, it, it is stressful that first, cause you, it's, you prep for it for so long and there's oh, yeah. a of time and it's like, okay, have you heard about the Mozart code? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> buy it for the cover um <laughs> and you're talking about it so yeah, much it, you feel like everybody else must be as sick of talking about it as you oh are oh my gosh yes <laughs> i'm sure we all feel that way oh yeah i'm never sick about talking about other people's books but yeah like no. right you, i just mean your own yeah right? yeah because <laughs> yeah. you live in it for so long but it, it it doesn't get like my last book release well, I had three books come out in 2020, so that was just terrible. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't get old to go into a bookstore and sign stock. Oh, it's yeah. still surreal to me. And we talked to the person and was like, can I sign those books? And some of them are like, can you prove it? And I'm like opening to the author photo, like, it's me. <laughs> can you prove it? <laughs> can you prove it? Because um, there's people going around just signing random authors' books. <laughs> actually, in a bookstore I worked at in Toronto and University, we actually did have someone do that. Nobody checked. <laughs> and <laughs> one of my coworkers was like, I don't think that's the author. And I'm like, someone's just randomly, saw I mean, hey, kudos. Anyone could do it. Walk in. How often do you know, and this was, you know, before the age of constant social media, how often do you know what an author looks like or right. pay attention? Except um, their author photo in the back, which half the time yeah. is 10 years old. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and Ashley, when's your book coming out? Uh, it was originally going to be May, but it got pushed to June 21st. Oh, okay. So. That cover is nope. amazing. In fact, I think I might like this cover better than the first cover. I was really excited beautiful. when I saw it. I was like, oh, it's beautiful. They are. Yeah, they're good really covers. Excited. Do you, do you have, can you show it? I, I, did, I haven't seen the new cover. I do not have it. Oh, sorry. I'll I, look wasn't it up. I wasn't ready like Rachel. <laughs> oh, but you also don't have a print copy. I just happened to like be drowning in these. Um, <laughs> it's like, hello. Uh, oh, Mozart code. You, I don't know about y'all, but half the time I don't get my author copies like till the a couple days before it comes out or oh. even after it comes out. So <laughs> and everybody's showing their copies and they're like, don't you love it? You're, You're like, like, I, I think one. <laughs> theoretically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I made a note of that because I didn't realize your release date got pushed. So yes. I'm gonna... Just I, happened a little bit that's recently. That's kind of everybody's story. Right. There's a days. lot of distribution oh, yeah. stuff happening. Yeah. And oh yeah. So. I know the the Lady Darby, the next Lady Darby was supposed to come out April 5th. Then it got to move to April 24th or whatever it is. And no, 26th. And then now it's April 19th. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Hey, you moved I'm up. Like, well, it's okay. <laughs> so anyway. It, it's sad that um, in my calendar, the Bridgerton release date is in larger font with highlights and Mozart code was just like release. But Anthony Bridgerton <laughs> is like my calendar. <laughs> like, what about I have... Sanditon? Is Sanditon in the same font or? Sanditon is, is a lower font because <laughs> um, I, I think that Sanditon, I like it, but I think that they need to figure out what they're doing. Um, I was kind of sad that Babington, who I loved. I love the Babington and Esther story. And I love Stringer, the architect. I was sad they're not back. Mm, I loved him. He was, yeah. I, he was he fantastic. Was he was the right guy. He was the right guy. Yeah. Excuse me. And it would have been an interesting angle. Yeah. For but her no. not to be with the, you know. Now we get new suitors. So, hey, but I do like see it, but it's, I've been very excited about Viscount Who Loves Me. I've been pretty excited too. Yeah, it's going to be good. So yeah, that's uh, release date little 
little check. Oh yeah, that's your book date. <laughs> Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs> you have your priorities straight i do and susan your book is your book august okay so the paperback for paris spy is coming out in august yes. but my first standalone novel called mother daughter trader spy is coming out september 20th September. All right. Awesome. The best of my knowledge. And I'm so sorry. I don't have a cover yet, but I have seen some different options and they're working on it and it's going to be very cool and very different from the Maggie. I awesome. love the titles. Yeah, um, me too. So much. Thank like you. that's a great title. That I'm is so a good excited. Title. Actually, I, a lot of you I've like read because I beg until you send me manuscripts. This is what I do. So people are going to love it. <laughs> this is what I do I beg and demand <laughs> actually there was one book that I wanted so badly that I wrote the editor and I begged to endorse it so I could get it early I'm Aww. like Can I please endorse this book and she's like we don't usually do endorsements for this you know we weren't planning on doing it because of this person's reputation um and you know she's so established in the romance world and it's like we're not going to do them i'm like please please <laughs> <laughs> they're like okay fine rachel you can endorse this book and then That's i wrote awesome. the biggest endorsement ever <laughs> <laughs> i love that such a nerd yeah you gotta you get go a lot of I love I love but I'm, I'm looking for any questions pop questions in if you've got them oh yeah <laughs> ask us things oh oh so I wanted to say congratulations Anna on the 10th Lady Darby book the oh thank 10th you book yes. it's such a huge accomplishment and such a huge anniversary and for me the Hollywood spy was my 10th so I feel yes. like like we're in the clot like we've got a 10 book <laughs> very know, cool right I mean I was honestly so prepping for the release mm -hmm. one of the things I'm writing is an article for crime reads which I will post the link about this somebody asked me about this after I talked about it early last week about something anyway I'm writing a crime Re reads article about long-running historical mystery series with female sleuths and um I was looking them up and there's really not a lot oh no, it's I was so like, okay weird. I'm gonna make 10 books the benchmark and there really isn't a whole lot that have been 10 books or more so I was like wow I feel I feel even more privileged to be in this club because I thought there was a lot more of them. So yeah, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> it's awesome. especially rare nowadays because I don't, I find that publishers are contracting fewer and fewer, you know, in my day job, I'm a literary agent. So I see more and more that it's one in an option or two in an option. Whereas before, if a ser you know, you'd contract four books in a series at a time. So as we always say, um, if you love a series you know Ashley's or uh Susan's or Anna's you, buy the books don't right. wait you can wait and binge them later but don't wait for the next book like you buy it please so that it can carry on for all time <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true yeah or borrow it at least from the library yeah. or something yeah <laughs> give it give us a hit <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, what? Oh, yes, yeah, Susan. Someone's asking, I guess they don't know who Susan Susan writes the Maggie Hope mysteries, which are fabulous. It's World War II. Um, Maggie Hope, I mean, it, she's kind of gone through a couple different iterations. She worked for Churchill, and then she's she's you know, a spy. And, and yeah. Secret agent. Yes. Um, kinds of things. Been to Paris and Scotland and she, America. She's amazing. <laughs> Los yeah. Angeles has has some guys in her life she's been in that cat i mean the prisoner in the castle is one of my favorite maggie books oh and what's the one i'm sorry i'm blanking on the title susan but what's the one where she's diffusing the bombs like the bomb. oh the king's justice yes. mm. yeah i like that one too thank you that was hard a really good one but um yeah so so now i'm actually starting my next maggie Hope book and she's Hi. going to be She's back with, if you remember him, John Sterling, mm -hmm. um, he's a former Royal Air Force pilot. Um, and she is going to Madrid to have Ooh. an interaction with Coco Chanel because in the 90s, all of this stuff came to light about Coco's um, 
being a Nazi spy and having like a spy number and fake name and the whole nine yards. And she went to Madrid with a specific mission in mind. And what's really interesting is there was like the mission the Nazis wanted her to do, but then there was the, I think the mission she wanted to accomplish. So it's really, there, there are like all these different like things going on. So it's interesting. I'm, I'm starting it now. I'm researching Madrid during the war and um, it's kind of fun. You know? That's cool. I wish you got to go to Madrid. Yeah. I wish we could all go to Madrid. Setting. Oh yeah, that sounds to, like a good idea. To help you. Let's all go help research. <laughs> Maybe we should all go do it together because, okay, I actually, I, I totally blundered my way through Paris, but I can actually speak Spanish. So, oh, wow. You can go out for some, you know, tapas and sherry. Yeah. And, um, I, I, Madrid's always been on, uh, it's been a bucket list city for me. me. Too. So I'm really excited to read it in fiction because it's not covered a lot. It's not. Um, I would, mm -hmm. you know, with World War II books, you know, obviously, there are so many now. Um, <laughs> I say this because Mr. Churchill's secretary came out, uh, it'll be 10 years ago next month. So 10 books, 10 years. Um, and the, the landscape was so different then. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was trying to get an agent and then when I was trying to get a publisher, I kept hearing people saying like, no, no, women only want you know, Elizabethan or Regency or Victorian historical fiction. Um, and I think really wow. um, Maisie Dobbs kind of blew that open for people, but I would like to think maybe Maggie was like- I, yes. I Absolutely. consider those two to kind of be hand in hand, but that's really funny because I'm just thinking of all the authors who are like, I've got an Elizabethan book right now and people it's are like- the opposite. Okay, yeah. so- it's not World War II or post-war. Although I'm seeing more stuff in the 50s. You know, it's it's yeah. changing a little bit. Um, Ashley, you you get to do really cool stuff. Ashley, you, you do amazing World War II books. And you yeah. go. Thank you. It's going to be like a sequel, a follow-up to the Electra book, right? I'm sorry? A I, yes. Your next book is the sequel. Yes, it's the Electra. second one in the series. Right. Yay. I'm so happy. Yes, I've had a lot of fun with that because, um, you know, she gets to do the sort of illegal stuff and knows people in the underworld and all that kind of, um, it's very different from the Amory Aim series. She comes from a, you know, totally different background. So I've had oh, a lot yeah. of fun researching the kind of, you know, little things she gets. Like for, for the first book, I got to learn how to um, crack a safe and things like that. So I just, it's been interesting, you know, with everything. Aside it's from everything fun. else, it's just been really interesting to learn how, how you know, to do these illegal things. <laughs> I was say, it's hard to toe that line, right? I mean, right. like, there's a reason everybody wants me to bring Bonnie Brock back all the time. Everybody's right? in <laughs> love with Bonnie Brock. In fact, I think when, so one of my friends was saying, yeah, <laughs> Gage is okay, but Bonnie Brock, <laughs> I love it. And he's the bad boy. <laughs> Ashley, your guys are so dishy. I just oh, thank love you them so much. Yeah. Oh yes, totally. but We're all in love speaking with of dishy, Rachel, I've been meaning to tell you how uh, swoony. <laughs> I won't give anything away for people who haven't read the Mozart Code yet, but there's a couple scenes in there that I was like, ooh, good. <laughs> I love, I, I love my so, son. Yeah, so, I, was I, I have to tell you when we're off camera, but there's like a specific scene where I was like, wow, this is so. Sweet. And, um, he's like I've got like a bit of a I always love my heroes like I feel that we'd be friends or I I'm really connected to them in different ways but Simon it's just full-on school girl crush like I think if people read it they're gonna be like this author is madly in love with him and he's the first conventionally good-looking hero I've actually written I usually write guys who are good-looking to the heroine that's you know who are just a bit different but Simon's just a dish well, to me, I hope you guys think he's a dish. Oh, definitely. He, <laughs> he walks on You're that You're not the only one with a crush on him, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's really dishy. Definite, like, literary boyfriend. Mm. I love him. Yeah, he's a good guy. Like I guess so he walks tortured. on the page in London Restoration and just, like, kind of steals the scene a little bit. <laughs> I, I love that. And I, he didn't tell me he was going to do that. Like, I created him as a... <laughs> Anna, Anna just did my launch with me at Brit Bodice, so she's heard this a million times now, but um, he just, 
I create him as a plot point and then he's he just told me that he needed to be this tortured soul who just needed to be loved but you know wrapped in Savile Row so it he's just yeah I love him and do you know what he he pines he's a piner he loves her so much like no. oh <laughs> no <laughs> So uh, we had someone who said, have you read The Spy Who Wore Red, The Spy Who Wore Silk? It takes place in Spain. I guess, oh, during World War II. I guess this It's a memoir, with... I think. Oh, is it a li- memoir? A, I think it's a oh, memoir. I have our a librarian friend. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to write that down. And I'm writing it down too. Add that yeah. down sure. It's in the comments of our thing if you need it. Oh, you cool. It, so. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, thank you, the book adventure. <laughs> I really like an old timey series by Arturo Perez Reverte, the Captain Ella Triste series. Oh yeah, set in Madrid. Oh, yes. and like I, I love those books so those much. Those are good books. Yeah. So, um, oh, someone's asking me. Yeah. So there is a someone's asking me about gothic myths. So Secrets oh, of the Mist God. came out forever ago. <laughs> I am like three, I have been three quarters of the way through book two f- forever, but the thing is that I self-publish those. And so I've been really, really blessed that I've gotten contracts from publishers for different things. And so I haven't had time to finish book two and I keep saying, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish it. Well, I just signed that contract to write um, the Titanic book. Yes. The Titanic <laughs> book. <laughs> so, so it's not going to get done this year now because of that. So it will get done. And I love it. I absolutely love it. The heroine in it is just, it's just fun. She's just reckless and like, doesn't think before she does stuff. She's impulsive and she's just been a lot of fun to write. And I can't wait to finish that book and finally (laughs) get it published, but I am going to stop giving a date because I just, I keep (laughs) telling everybody next year and then it's not next year. So (laughs) <laughs> Someday it will come out, but I don't know when. And I'm really sorry for those of you who've been waiting. And I'm very flattered you guys keep asking. Believe me, it's I love I'm that. not abandoning it. It's just um I gotta take <laughs> when I get the offered the contracts and I'm supporting my family, I gotta get done when I gotta get done. So <laughs> and when does the new so we've got um Lady Darby in April? When's Verity Kent this year? So Verity, the next Verity, a certain darkness comes out uh August 30th yes book six so yeah <laughs> sydney is also a dish yes yeah. I, love, I love me some totally. sydney uh susan you got to write uh dishy hero and mother daughter trader spy how much fun was writing know, he, that he, character he's, dishy? he's a little grumpy. I, he's, he's a grumpy he is he's but not. he's kind of my catnip <laughs> He's not a standard <laughs> romantic lead in any way. That's why I love him. Uh, <laughs> I kind of thought you would. I was hoping you would. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, he's also pretty cool because he's like a former journalist, but he's also um, running this spy ring in Los Angeles because this is my American book. Um, and so he's one of the spy masters of like the... Um, spies that are infiltrating the local Nazi groups in Los Angeles in 1940. So uh, he's, he's very serious. But. Did, did you always want to do a standalone or was it when you were writing Hollywood Spy that you're like, there's a I treasure was just about trove? To ask this. Ooh, that's yeah. a good question. Yeah. You guys are so smart. Um, I actually, <laughs> when I was researching Hollywood Spy, I found out about this mother daughter spy team. Um, they worked together. They were spies for um, this organization for I think five years. And um, I was so impressed with them. And like, I thought they were so cool that I had to write about them. I mean, I thought they were so neat. And they were like, so the book that I read that was so inspiring for Hollywood Spy was called um, Hitler in Los Angeles, which is, it's uh, really light reading, Um, but it's actually like a really great nonfiction that reads really well and reads like a thriller but um these women just you know they were like a footnote to that book and I think it was like my third time reading it where I was just kind of like wait a minute there's a story <laughs> here this is gonna be really cool so yeah is that so the book the- your husband found and sent you yes that's the book my husband found because he was doing um 
the Muppets take the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles, and he was in the airport, and he got he saw he saw that it was a book about Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> some some people bring flowers home from a trip. Or <laughs> chocolate. These chocolates. He yeah. knows the way to an author's heart. He also has the best freaking job in the world. Like it's so cool. I love seeing what he's doing. He he does. He has he is doing some great stuff. Although right now he's in bed with COVID, yeah. but he's okay. He's going to be fine. He's vaccinated and boosted and. It's all good. Right. It's just such a pain. But, um, you guys have been so careful. Yeah. He's um he's directing Sesame Street tomorrow by um video. Oh <gasps> wow! Yeah. He put, he's put so much work into this like bunch of scenes that they're filming oh. tomorrow. So they said if he could do it by video, and he he actually thinks it's, it's going to be fun. And I mean, he'd oh, rather cool. do it in person, but he thinks it's going to be really fun. So. How did you two meet? I've always wondered because you're both um, really we, cool. <laughs> We have a mutual friend. So I did, um, I went to Wellesley and I did musical theater at MIT. And um, one of my friends from MIT um, moved to New York as I did. And we've kept in touch. And then like seven years after we moved to New York, um, he asked me if I wanted to go to, of all things, an acapella competition. Um, but some of our friends were like, you could tell how geeky I was, right? I love that. <laughs> love it. You're totally my jam here. No, I, I'd be there with bells on. That's my... <laughs> so, so some of my friends from college were singing this acapella competition. And then my, my MIT friend actually lived across the hall from Noel, who became my husband. So we met that night. And then bizarrely, um, we ended up at the same engagement party the next day and then he asked me oh and um yeah so that that's that's how Aww. that happened yeah very cool i love that and can you tell is it maybe it's confidential but can you tell us what guest stars might be on his sesame street oh um this is a, a special episode and it's in a new uh place on you know the street uh, which is a barber shop and one thing that's happened after the summer of 2020 is they're trying to make sesame street and especially uh the puppets more diverse both in terms of puppeteers but also in terms of the characters so there are a whole bunch of black puppets um puppets who are black who go to the barber shop and my husband nice. is also black, so that kind of like so he's dry. That is just so fun. That's yeah, cool. that sounds really fun. I always I have to say, which is I don't know. I, I think of him, my kids are still my one child is still young enough. She watches Sesame Street. So whenever we watch Sesame Street, I think of your husband. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, I know, I know. I lo I lost my mind when I saw Roy Kent was on Sesame Street. That's not his name, <laughs> but he's Roy Kent in my mind. Oh, I know. <laughs> he, it, it, killed me that he didn't do that one but oh he would have loved that doesn't he have the jersey he does he loves Roy Kent he loves Roy Kent. Um, <laughs> and you know anyway he would have he would have loved to have done that but no that's awesome it's still really cool I think it's an amazing thing <laughs> so cool. oh. sorry I'm looking through to see if we have any questions Um, yes. I, oh, that's so funny. Someone just asked how you guys met. <laughs> we just asked you. I'm like, that's so funny. We're on the same wavelength. <laughs> Julie. Oh, awesome. Yeah. How do you meet a puppeteer? I don't know. I think most. I don't, <laughs> a new book by Susan. <laughs> it can be your non alone. Yeah. How to meet a puppeteer in New York City. <laughs> new York is so crazy. I love you. <laughs> it's awesome. That's awesome. So oh. fun. So Ashley, you're gearing up too. So you'll be in June, your new book. I can't wait. Has, has any, have you gotten to read it right? Yeah, Rachel. I, I have, I'm halfway through Ashley. I was halfway through and I got sidetracked by like the 18 million jobs I've had to do this <laughs> month. Um, you know, it's like Murphy's Law. It's, you you figure out that everything is going to be okay and you can get everything tackled and then like in my agent job then everybody goes to pub board on the same day it's like or everybody needs something at the same time so 
Oh, Ashley, what I read was amazing. Uh, like, you know, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I, I stalked you until you became my friend. Internet stalked people. I internet stalked you too, media. Ashley. Because I, I got to read your first book and give a blurb. And then oh, yes. I think we like friended each other or something, but like I never sort of heard from you. So then I kind of started slipping into <laughs> your class. Like, notice me. Maybe we'll be friends. <laughs> That's, I felt the same way. I was like, oh, these authors that like I know and that like I see in my library job are like my friends on Twitter. It was, it was crazy. And I was and like, I oh, Ashley, please notice me. Notice me. <laughs> I really love your books. And I think it's good for readers to know this that we all like, I became friends with Anna because I, oh my gosh, I just wouldn't shut up about Lady Durbin. <laughs> um, I wouldn't shut up. And then Susan, it was really during the beginning of t- like the pandemic lockdown yeah, that I, I mean, really I loved chatting you, with you. I think we were friends on Twitter. Yeah. That. But that was when we really kind of like bonded, definitely. Yeah. I think Click. Twitter was great for um, writers in a way, you know, during the pandemic, we at least could talk to each other. You know? Right, right. Yeah. So and so everybody crazy. knew the experience in a way that other people didn't. And, and in fact, um, Kate Quinn's new book, The Diamond Eye, is dedicated. She was another pandemic, like, late at night. I can't write anymore, Kate Quinn. And Kate Quinn is so kind. She's just like, here's a gif of a bunny. But anyway, uh, she, uh, she dedicated her new book, which comes out on Tuesday, to anyone who was writing during the pandemic. Yeah, I love that. I thought that was really great because it was really hard. Um, but we stalk each other. Actually, Colleen Oakley, who's a writer I love, uh, she tagged me in an Instagram post that her Mozart code had arrived. And I'm like, wait, you know who I am? And do you have my book? Like, I, <laughs> I lose my mind with stuff like that. It's like, wait, how? You know me? Yeah, we all kind of, I, I hope yeah, I never We're all stop fans of each other. Going. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, we're all readers first. I mean, we right. all fans of each it. other. That's and, it. I mean, yeah. I, and I get asked, you know, how do you, somebody asked recently, how do you, how do you find time to read while, when you're doing so much writing? And I'm like, because it's, I love to read. I mean, it's like what I want to do in my free time, you know, so I, I make the time, you know, so yeah, we all do. I procrastinate read. Yeah, that's like, oh, yeah, well, well at least I'm reading. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Research. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like, you know, um, at least I'm doing something productive with the time I'm not spending doing what I'm supposed to be doing. (laughs) This Lisa Claypass novel isn't going to read itself for the 12th time. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) So what's everybody reading now? Oh. Or or what have you read lately? That's good. Oh, I can say I'm... This is so funny. I feel like Rachel, I keep telling you the same kind of stuff because we're talking about this. I, I feel like we've been doing this a lot. <laughs> so I have been um, rereading some Mary Balo books. I just love right. historical romances. So I, oh, I like her too. The Survivors Club. I'm, I'm rereading some of those. I just, they're like, com- they're like comfort reads for me because they're like, they're so good, but they're like, cozy and I could just like wrap myself in them and I don't know for some reason I'm needing that right now she has so many marriage of convenience which is my favorite I think it's, it's my favorite, favorite too, trope Rachel. oh yeah. yeah it's my favorite trope in all the land I um, love it yes because you're like okay you're stuck together for the rest of your life are you gonna fall in love or not and do you know what Ashley there's almost that sense in even though you don't do that trope in um your Milo and Amory books there's there's that devotion they have to each other that there is like that magnet that they have to find each other again yeah I did I did kind of like that um I had fun with them because it's like you said they're already married but so but they still have you know so much to work through so it's kind of fun to explore that when you're sort of stuck together you know (laughs) uh the last real amazing book I read was for endorsement which is you know where you read and then blurb to put on the book um and it was maggie brooks acts of love and war it comes out in september i believe with penguin uh she's a british writer who is a used to be a journalist for the bbc and she wrote a book called the prisoner's wife 
which I stayed up till 4 a.m. reading, I think in the summer of 2020, I got an advanced copy and I read it like all the way through. And then of course, as I do, I went to Goodreads and wrote a very rambling gush about it. Like I've, in all caps, this is the best book I've ever read. Oh my gosh. It's about a woman who just, a, a Czech woman who disguises herself as a man so she can follow her British husband into his POW camp. Oh, and live as a I'm writing like, down as you tell these. It's based on a true story. It is absolutely amazing. So Maggie Brooks read that all caps, yell of a gush, rant of love. And uh, we connected and she sent me a signed hardcover of her book. So awesome. But then oh, I love it. she asked me if I would endorse Acts of Love and War, which comes out soon. It's set during the Spanish Civil War Ooh. and I loved it. And I was so honored to blurb it like when you guys have asked me to do your books I get so fluttery in my heart (laughs) it's like oh this is great um but a a book I'm really excited about is the new Emily Henry like I want that like Mm. five minutes ago I love Emily Henry's books and this one is set in the publishing world book lovers so I can't wait for that one so I'm reading a great book called love and saffron and it's written by Kim Faye um we were nominated for the Edgar Award uh, 10 years ago together. And she she hasn't really been doing a lot of writing since, but she wrote this in the pandemic. And she was another one. I mean, we've stayed friends, but we were writing a lot to each other during the early days of the pandemic. And she's like, I wrote this thing and I think it's not good, but maybe it's good. And I don't know. And would you read it? And I read it and I, I was just like, I love this. This Aww. is amazing you have to keep going and like, you have to, you know, show your agent and publisher and everything. And it's like this gorgeous epistolatory novel. Oh, I love that style. Love that too. It's like two women, one younger and one older. And it's during like the sixties and seventies. And one is a aspiring cook and one is a cookbook author and they're on different coasts and just fun lives and loves and their friendship and it's so beautiful and it's so life affirming and oh I just I I can't believe like she's one you know Kate Quinn you know that that's like something else that got written during the pandemic and I just can't believe I can't believe it's so wonderful so everyone should read it love and saffron I'm writing these all down as you guys mentioned me too (laughs) I read a good one, a really good one for endorsement too. It was um, a botanist guide to parties and poisons. Oh, I, that cover Ooh. is everywhere. Isn't it an amazing yeah. cover? I believe I follow her on Twitter, and she is a delight. Oh, that's exciting. Yes, it was really, it was really fun. She's the um, the character is a research assistant in 1920s England, and so it's really um, some good, you know, poisony things and stuff. Yeah, poisony. <laughs> yeah, poisony. <laughs> Poison seems to be a, a thing. It's it's going through its moment right now. There's lots of um, really fun that kind of stuff. Books. Yeah, I got, we got a couple comments. We got a loved watching Bear in the Big Blue House with my daughter. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, Ashley, are you a, a librarian? Julie is too. She was just commenting. Yes, you're a librarian, Ashley. I am. Know. Yes, I'm you're a librarian. A... I work at a public library here in Louisiana. Um, I'll let you guys read some of these comments later. I'm just gonna, I'm not going to read them all, but there's a lot of gushing, like, love you guys kind of comments, um, which thank, thank you me. guys. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> we do read these later. I just don't read them all out loud. Um, almost someone said, thank you all for helping us get through the pandemic with your writing and virtual appearances. Aww. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yes, for sure. You guys, we feel the same way. Readers. Thank you for Oh, yes, comments help, I mean, a ton. Right. I mean, emails and social media and just, oh my gosh, they feed us. They just do. They feed us. I mean, um, let's see. And you can reach so many readers with virtual. I mean, it was amazing because Anna and I did my launch, my American launch day last Tuesday. And we got to be with the Ripped Bodice, the coolest bookstore in the history of the world. That's called the Ripped Bodice in Los Angeles. <laughs> you know, we could reach so many readers from home talking with the Ripped Bodice, which I'm still not over yet because they're that's so amazing. Cool. Anna and I were actually talking about that before we came on about how there's been some benefits to you know the sort of new horizons that Zoom, the Zoom era has opened up, just because yeah. you know you're able to 
you know, all of us get together and be in one place. It's pretty exciting. Pretty and fun. not every reader can afford or lives near to where the book mm-hmm. signings usually are. So I, I think this is the best, I, especially as a Canadian who, you know, my publisher is in the States and everything is um, American. It seems that, you know, the, it's yes, I can do Toronto events easily because I'm here, but it's just been great to be able to be at bookstores. Which this goes along with someone asked, do you enjoy promoting books through virtual events or are you excited to possibly do in person again? I mean, I, I love both. I mean, I think, I think hybrid's here to stay. I honestly do. I think that virtual is just not going to go away because it does, it does, it works so well and it can access so many more people and it's just easier for the authors. And, but of course it's always fun to get to travel and meet readers and see other authors and you know so I think it I think hybrid's here to stay I mean can't wait to go back to a bookstore I cannot wait and, you know for a lot of it you know you you tour enough you start to get to know the people you know right. who go to that bookstore and then you know you know the staff and the owner and it's just like oh I miss it so much I get to go to my first bookstore in forever <laughs> um yeah. Yeah, for the launch on April 20th, I'll be at Mystery Lovers in Oakmont, Pennsylvania with um, Amanda Flower and Julianne Lindsay. And we're also doing Mechanicsburg on the 24th. So I'm super excited to actually That's see a good people team. again. It's going to be hybrid really too. So if people can't be in the store, they can watch online or if they're sick or whatever. So, but yeah, I'm like, ah, oh, we're back. You know, like we can actually book those again. <laughs> But there is the point where you get to do virtual events with authors you really love. Um, one of my first virtual events over the pandemic for London Restoration was with Susanna Kearsley, and it was supposed mm-hmm. to be in person. And I've, yeah, I was just like, ah, because th- that's those moments where it would have been so cool. Yeah. Obviously, she's still a delight on virtual. Anna, you did a billion virtuals <laughs> with her promoting Deadly she's Hours. Lovely. Yeah, she's amazing. She is but, lovely. Uh, you know, that was just that would have been such a treat to be able to do that in person. I um, totally hear you. Did you, you had events and stuff scheduled for 2020, didn't you? Because yeah, like that was the year the, the anthology came out and we were supposed to go on this big tour, yeah. all four of us and like, nope, all of us canceled. I yeah. have, it's all virtual, so. <laughs> I have boxes of Dream Plan Go, a travel guide to inspire. That was an romantic book. adventure. That came out April 2020, and that <laughs> literally nobody bought. Um, so I recorded the I... audiobook even, and it well, was I'm pushing that now. If you are ready to travel again, you need to buy. Oh that my book. gosh, guys! So it was good. my my largest print run to date. It was just gonna, you know, it was gonna take off, and graduations and weddings, and I was gonna do these trade shows, and it's like. Sad Aww. trombone. <laughs> <laughs> Dream Aww. plan. Stay where you are. <laughs> plan for the future. <laughs> and the the sad thing about publishing is, you know, you get that moment where marketing is behind it, and it's not the publisher's fault. But you're you're the frontless title. Everything's behind the book. You get it, and then you know, pandemic, nobody's buying travel books. Nobody's allowed to go to bookstores. It's like, mm, um, and the publishers have to move on and move on to the next book. So you hope that people still find it, but, uh, that that's my pandemic sadness. Luckily I had two other books come out that year, London restoration, which was my historical novel and, um, a very merry holiday movie guide, another little gift book. And, it, but it was just that travel book that was just like, oh, so please buy it. It's up there. It's really good. Good. The it is a good, it's beautiful. Are really cute. It is. Um, it's beautiful. It just, it, it, there were so many books, I think that just had that ironic moment and you feel so badly for authors, especially debut authors. Oh, I, I heard know. so many right. stories. God. Everybody was getting ready. And then it's, you only get those windows to really make a splash in a very bottom line business industry. Right. So, yeah. I used to work in publishing and they used to say that books, like new books, new releases had the shelf life of yogurt. And I mean, really it's like six weeks. Oh yeah. Wow. That you can, and then it's like, 
on to the next. So. That's why we always yell at you to do pre-orders and to leave Amazon reviews. If you're all ever like, authors, why are you so obsessed? We didn't come up with this on our own. <laughs> it really is. We, yeah. We get pushed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, Rachel, you didn't get to show your shirt. Oh, Ooh, I yeah. have wearing them. I bought a few Mozart t-shirts. <laughs> I have one that says I heart Mozart um, <laughs> just to keep in like the motif of I also wanted to have a bit of a uniform because I'm doing so many zooms to not have to come up with what did I wear last time you know if I have someone who's super enthusiastic and following me over the internet I wanted to not have to worry about what I'm gonna wear <laughs> <laughs> so I have some Mozart shirts um he's kind of the starring historical figure in uh in the mozart code he is there <laughs> yeah oh yes i'm wearing a captain marvel shirt so. yeah. <laughs> i was telling the ladies my hair was being cheeky today because it's humid and it was just kind of doing whatever it wanted so i was like well i just have to go sassy i guess so <laughs> which is a fun shirt but yeah <laughs> Oh, somebody's computer keeps dying. I'm sorry. This will we'll have this for replay though. So you can always rewatch it. So, and I'm going to post it to YouTube tomorrow. Like I always do. So you are so, <laughs> so Anna, you are so good at this. Aww. Yes. For real. So good. It's fun. So good. It's good to have the content, right? I mean, cause we're all like shouting into the void. Like we're supposed to do promo, but we're like, what do I do? <laughs> so I'm like content. <laughs> I have another event coming up next week and I was asking Anna for all the tips before I was like so how do I do and I was like taking notes <laughs> so I was like she'll know what is it should we we can show up and yeah. oh sure um uh, it's Monday with my Sleuth and Time authors group I'm doing a um conversation with oh wait no this is gonna be bad I'm not gonna be able to remember hold on we're talking about <laughs> why am I blanking <laughs> now okay. We put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, this is, and honestly, there's so many, so many things going on. Give me Nobody a second. You guys me. talk about something and I'll come back. To this. Hold on. <laughs> so how many more events do you have, Rachel? You still have a few. Um, I still have a few and there's a few in the works. However, you guys know that I do my Facebook live conversations where I interview authors. Oh yeah. I took a bit of a hiatus because of Mozart code, but I'm back with Tears of Price, who's been writing those um, Pride and Prejudice Regency retellings for With a Murder Twist. Ooh. So I've got her coming up. And then Eliza Knight, the Mayfair Bookshop. Ooh. I'm doing a chat with her. And um, I've got Elizabeth Everett I need and Bryn Turnbull, who I need to reschedule. So Bryn Turnbull, actually another Toronto writer. Yes. She wrote The Last Grand Duchess about Olga Romanov. Yes. Um, so I want to chat with her. So I'm going to start getting back into that. Um, but I've still got a few bookstores to do. Um, bookstores have been so lovely. And if they're just over virtual events, they're like, no more virtual everyone is just like but can you send book plates and I love that mm. so at least there's some kind of personal touch uh with bookstores that are far away from me so okay so <laughs> okay yes I've got it I'm doing it with Erica Ruth Neubauer who oh, wrote cool. um Murder at the Mina House and Murder at Wedgefield Ooh. Manor I couldn't remember the those name are of the gorgeous book. covers yes too. aren't they amazing covers I love them so her new book is um Danger on the Atlantic I think it comes out uh, next Tuesday so we're doing the event Monday at I believe 6 p.m central so it'll be 7 eastern nice there's a lot of really good books coming out next week. I was noticing that I have like five on my <laughs> to be. Yes, to I have so list. much. I have so much com things coming up and written down that like I just could not remember what I was doing one day. So thank you for bearing I, with me. Sorry, Erica Ruth. Get, I really love the, your books. I just <laughs> I get so nervous on Tuesdays that I'm gonna miss somebody. Oh, I know, right? It's so hard. Yeah. That Tuesday your book came out, Rachel. My computer died, and I had to take it to the shop. So then. I realized it sort of missed all of your book celebrations. So I was like on my little phone and trying to like. That's so sweet. I just it's hard. Like, it's I actually set nice. a reminder in my phone for your book, Rachel. Oh, I had read it. You, you guys know, are so, so nice. Ago, I was like, remind me to congratulate Rachel. <laughs> I didn't want to forget. I love it. And it, it also is hard because.
because I read so many books from my author friends ages before they release. So right. I don't always have pub dates in my mind. And absolutely. Like, oh, yeah. this book is out. So <laughs> I have to make notes like in my agenda. Otherwise it's like, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Unless I'm like already, cause it, and if you pre-ordered it half the time, I like forget and then it shows up. Oh yeah. I pre-ordered this, you know, <laughs> Or sometimes I'll be like, I'll go to Rachel's Twitter. She knows everybody that I know. <laughs> Retweet hers. I'm not the only person to say that today. Somebody else was like, I don't know, Rachel McMillan, totally I'll just steal whatever she said. Like, yeah, totally, totally true. <laughs> That's funny. That's fantastic. Um, I should tell you guys that I've got another... I've got a book coming out in March, 2023. That's a collaborative novel with two other writers. For her. It's called the castle keepers. And it's the same castle in Yorkshire across three different wars. So Amy Runyon, who wrote school for German brides that is coming out in April and is going to take over. Like it's already going to be a bestseller everywhere. Um, she's doing the Boer war apart and Janelle Zelski, who wrote The Ice Swan, which is amazing, and The Socialite, it's so good. She's doing World War I, and then I'm doing just post-World War II. And the connecting theme besides the castle is you know, a poison garden that's actually based on a real poison garden. So uh, that, that is- sounds gonna, amazing. Uh, that it does. I really want to start, we're in the edit stage of it, and we're going to see some cover concepts soon. And that was one of the pandemic projects that really allowed me to connect with two other authors. And, um, Sorry, my dogs are going crazy. They're both one of, I love your dogs. <laughs> they're always so bad when I'm on Zoom. <laughs> I did a Zoom so with um, Madeline Martin. And when her cat Ink showed up, I was like, he's a celebrity because Ink is in so much of her social media. She features him. Like, oh my gosh, Ink, you can't. I feel I know you. <laughs> I, I always I try to schedule these things after my kids are in bed because otherwise <laughs> I had something a couple of weeks ago and they just like were like standing I have like glass uh I have French doors with glass on them because <laughs> so my doors in my office so they're standing outside the doors like <laughs> and I'm like go away because <laughs> they know they're not allowed to come in and be on you know so <laughs> That's so funny and so cute. <laughs> it's just a security thing. I don't, you know, I don't show their faces or say their names. I, I just totally never know that. who the creepy people are out there. So most people are fine, but you just never know. So <laughs> anyway. What about you, Susan? I'm well, you have you have fun quarantine stuff going on in your house right now. It's like living arrangements have to change, right? Yes, so my husband's <laughs> tested for COVID. He tested positive. Um, I and my son tested negative. So he has like our bedroom and bathroom uh, and my son and I are sharing a bathroom. I'm going to be sleeping on the sofa for the next five to 10 days. Um, I know, I know. I don't even, you know, I don't sleep anyway. So I, why, should I, <laughs> why should this be a big <laughs> I, I will say the pandemic wrecked my sleeping. I think a lot of people oh, had yeah. this issue. I mean, oh, you wake up and you're not sure what you're worried about, but you're worried about something. And then you could just like pick anything and it's like <laughs> anything in it's the world. And it's, concern, worrisome. Yes. <laughs> it's like, maybe I woke up because of this. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it's just been constant stress for everybody. And it, on deadline, I wake up and send myself emails about things that I need to do in the manuscript that make no sense the next morning. <laughs> well, I do that. I do that on like the little notes. Um, I, I feel like roll over. It's almost like my brain doesn't shut off and it's still writing. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck did that say? Especially when middle of the night, Rachel thought it was a great idea. Oh yeah, I've solved that plot. I love, I have just like the notepad and then I, I don't turn the light on. I'm just like writing with the, in the dark, you know, and like hoping that it like, I could read it the next morning, you know? Yeah, I had that, I had a dream one time. I was like, oh, that will solve my entire plot. And then I woke up and I was like, that does not solve anything. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> We're all brilliant in our sleep and then... <laughs> 
<laughs> what do, what does that say though? Oh gosh, it's so fun. <laughs> Man, Mozart code. Did you guys know that half of the edits for this book were where Simon's glasses were at any given moment? It was like three <laughs> pages of notes. Um, they were just, in fact, to the point where I'm not writing a hero with glasses for a while because of this, because it's, <laughs> wait, he put them on, where are they? Are they on? Are they, and he has these super adorable um, gold rim glasses that Sophie calls his gold rim armor. And I love the nerdy guys. <laughs> So it just gives him a little bit of a nerd, even though he's so handsome. And it's, um, they were near the plant. Now they're on the table. Where yeah. are they? It's, it's <laughs> stuff like that, that you feel, you know, as many books as I am into this, how have I not figured this out yet? I think it is and the those last words book I did keep... like a whole glasses read. Like, because <laughs> your characters just wear them because they're cool. Like some of my characters wear them because, you know, they're like middle-aged or old. <laughs> so, like if they read, they have to like put on their glasses and then they, you know, they'll take them off when they're like talking to somebody or like to make a point. But, you know, you got to kind of like, where are they? Yeah, I, I feel like I do that in the Verdi Kent series because like the men, well, some women too, but they smoke. And so I'm like trying yeah. to keep track of like, okay, like I don't want them always smoking, but like they do smoke, but like, it's like I spend way too much time, to time trying to figure out which scenes have smoking and which don't and whether it's a good balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done that before. Like, did they put their cigarette out, or, cigarette out already? Or like, do they still have it? Or like, oh, they stuck their cigarette out, out, right, cigarette out a second time. Yeah. <laughs> and now, and now they're kissing. Where did the cigarette go? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I do have, and nobody's mentioned this in. You know, you always hope that some reader is gonna say something about a, a line or a, a scene that you liked. And there's a, one moment where Sophie fogs up Simon's glasses because they're in an amorous. And I was like, this is a good way to bring back that he's wearing them. So he takes them and puts them in his pocket. But I just, she fogs up his glasses. He's like, you fogged up my glasses. And nobody's mentioned that, but I hope some nerd who's reading this, <laughs> oh, wow. this is oh, like, wow. this is my jam. Yeah. I, I found that the sexiest scene in this. Um, <laughs> Bridgerton be damned. <laughs> Love it. Rhymes can take notes. And your character is, I mean, Ashley, there's a lot of whiskey drink you know and just because of the time period it's the 1930s and it, there's a lot of like where did that tumbler go or that must mm -hmm. any time that they have something or you need a beat and your editor will say like you need to have an action movement here it's like okay what are they doing there's, writing is just really complicated guys um <laughs> How in the world at large it's just a lot of small stuff action. like this that's harder than the you know the big stuff how many times how many times can Rachel use the word doubtless in a manuscript? I had no idea that was my word, but that was my word for Mozart code. Doubtless. Do you guys have a different one for each book? Like for each yes. book, I have like a word that I totally overused. Yes. Like, through or emotion so or yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I noticed I one I used like too many times in the first book. So in the second book, when I finished, I did a, um, like a document search and it was in there like yeah. 36 times. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Get rid of some of these. <laughs> I, do the same thing. Like, I have to make notes so that I go back and check my previous offenders, you know, like. Right. Yeah. It's hard oh, because yeah. the more you work on it and edit it, the harder it is to see it from an objective mm -hmm. distance. So mm -hmm. it's like, did they still so someone else points it out so. to you? You're like, oh, I totally missed all of these. <laughs> oh, yep. goodness. Well, uh, if anybody has any last questions, go ahead and pop those in before we wrap up. Um, yeah, it is. It's weird. Somebody commented about the smoking. Yeah, it's it's is strange to write about smoking when we don't smoke. <laughs> like, so. Oh yeah, but you my can't not have it. I mean, that's so what she they did. She's like proofing all my stuff because she used to be a smoker. She's older. She used to be a smoker. So she's like, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but it's so, I mean, in the period I'm writing, 
it's like smoke everybody smoked all the time that's all they did everybody smoked um, yeah everybody smoked so it's yeah. i mean it's kind of disgusting to think about now in historical hindsight but that you know and i did have a reviewer say that it just like it almost made me yell how much they were smoking and i'm like i know i'm sorry to give you <laughs> fictional secondhand smoke um <laughs> should have come with a warning <laughs> trigger warning smoking trigger warning content warning everybody there is lots of smoking (laughs) and anna we're we're gonna have to get the band back together because we have a few other releases this year i mean we've got every everybody has something out this year from us Mm -hmm. our little quartet we were during the pandemic yeah these are always fun it's just nice to laugh with you guys (laughs) yes i love it cool well, I think we're going to wrap it up. I don't see any other questions. Did we miss anything that we needed to talk about? Everybody, everybody should give a shout out to either your most recent release or what's coming out. Rachel, you go first. What's our code? It came out last Tuesday. Please go and uh, get it. Or if you don't get it, please go to your library and ask them to get it. Uh, that That's my favorite thing. And if you have read it or think that you like it or like the cover, go to Amazon and tell them. Just be like good cover two thumbs up it helps <laughs> and ashley um, i have the key to deceit which is the second book in my electra mcdonald series coming out june 21st Yay. Yay. and susan you have two you have a, uh, a paperback Holly and the- is out now paperback coming out in august that's maggie hope number 10 but you can read them out of order uh, and then my first standalone uh, mother daughter trader spy is coming out in september september 20th and you can pre-order it and please pre-order it that would be lovely thank you yes pre-order everything <laughs> um and i have a perilous perspective lady darby book 10 which comes out april 19th and a certain darkness dirty cat book um six comes out august 30th so Lots, awesome. lots for you guys to read right <laughs> so rachel rachel and sydney's love affair shall continue <laughs> <laughs> well uh we thank you guys all for joining us this, it's always fun to chat for you guys and and to answer your questions so um we hope you guys all have a wonderful night thank you, thank you. good night good night